Good day, it's Konstantin. In this video, we are going to look at how we can set up sidechain compression in Logic Pro. Now, if you're watching for another DAW, the steps might be a bit different, but the principles are the same. Now, first of all, what is sidechain and sidechain compression? Producers usually use both terms to describe the same thing, and that is sidechain compression, but they are not the same. Sidechain compression is just one of the ways you can use sidechain. So in very, very easy terms, sidechain is when you have an effect on a track activated by another audio source. And we call that other audio source the trigger. By far, the most common sidechain technique is sidechain compression. Sidechain compression is when we use the level of an instrument, or sound, it can be anything really, as a trigger to activate a compressor that will control the level of another sound. Now, the most two common examples, and we will look at both, are the kick and bass and kick and pads for electronic music. The application of this is very different though. One is used to control the sound in a mixing situation, and the other is used as an effect. In the kick and bass application, whenever the kick hits, that triggers the compressor and it ducks uh, the bass and then brings it up to its original volume. Ducking is the temporarily lowering of volume whenever that is triggered by another sound. A good example would be the white life documentaries that you watch. So the sound effects and music are being lowered every time the voiceover comes in. That is not done manually, it would take forever. That is done using a compressor and more, and more specifically a ducker. So what's the purpose of sidechain compression? Let's stay on the kick and bass example. Both of these instruments occupy the same frequency range, the low end, so it's only natural that they will be fighting. So with side chain compression, we can lower the volume of the bass just for when the kick hits. That way, we are creating a small hole in the frequency spectrum, and these two instruments will stop fighting each other, and that actually helps the kick punch through the mix better. And that is a great tool to have in your toolbox, Let's listen to what we, we will be working with before we set it up. So this is from my Taisho Goto uh, music track. And so it's not a real bass. I had to process it to make it sound like a bass, but the principle is the same. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Very dirty bass, lots of fighting in the low end, so let's set it up. Now there are two ways of going about it. For both, you will put the compressor, let's actually do that right now, to the channel that you want to affect. So the first method uses sidechain and you sidechain it directly to the audio source, and the second method is to do it through a bus. So for this one, before we go there, if you, I know you're probably thinking, why do I have a track stuck on my bass? This is because I have split my bass into two tracks to work on the low end and upper frequencies separately. This is essentially just one track. In any case, uh, for almost all the plugins you open in Logic, on the upper right corner you will get the sidechain option. So click on it and select the trigger. The trigger is the sound that will essentially trigger the compression. So in our case we want kick E, so I'm going to audio, and then all the way down to kick, kick, E. And that's it. Or, as I mentioned, the, sem so the second way is to do it through a bus. Now for this track, this is the method that I use, because in this track I have five different parts, and five different drum sets for each part. Each part is very different in sound from the other parts, but the bass is the same. So it saves me, saves me a lot of time to just send the kicks from all the drum parts on one bus, and then use that to sidechain the bass. I'd say another plus to that method is that you can actually use one, you can do more side chains with just one bus, because you might want to trigger something else other than compression. Let's look at the bus method. So we want to set it on the kick. So I'm going to the kick, I'm going to the bus, let's do the first available one, bus 16, let's actually press X to open up the mixer. I'm going to click on it and hold down option, and then click on it to set it to Unity. So right now, Actually, I need to solve the drums as well. There you are. 
So it's going here, but right now we are listening to both of these and I don't want that, so I'm going to set the aux channel to no output. But now if I take the kick down, there will be no signal on my aux channel. So what I'm going to do is to set it to pre-fader. Pre-fader means that my signal will be sent to the bus before it hits the channel fader. So if I go ahead and completely take the volume down on this channel, the signal will still go to the aux channel. Let's actually rename that as well. Side saying kick. As you can see, the signal still goes there. So essentially we have set up a trigger and no matter what we do with these channels, the trigger will always be there. And now that we have set it up, let's start messing with the compressor. So let's go to the compressor. So right now it's set to the kick. If you do it through a bus, you have to reset it again. So bus and then select the one that you need. So in our case, kick E again. The result will, will be the same, so don't worry about it. And so what I like to do is to start with extreme settings and then back off until it sounds good. Obviously, you will be able to hear it in solo, but in context, it shouldn't make much of a difference. And the final result will be quite subtle. So let's take this, let's actually crank it up. Let's take the attack and release down a bit more ratio. As you can hear, that's extreme. So let's back off. That's, that's about 30 dB. That's a lot. Right, let's take the ratio down. I don't want gain. Much, much better. So let's do before and after. So if you put the attack and the release all the way down, so super fast, you can actually hear the pump, especially even if it's in context. So you have to back off a little. You still want a fast attack and a fast release. And if you take the release a bit more, if you, if you go higher, you will see you still get the pumping effect. So lower it. Yeah, there you go. That's, it's, it's very subtle, but it will work. So let's do a before and after in context. Feels that the bass and the kick work much better together, so let's actually listen just with the kick and the bass. Yeah, they lock in together much, much better. Of course, it's also personal preference, so if you want a bit more or a bit less, this is up to you. Because mixing is a personal preference. So, for example, you might want something like that. You might want that pumping effect, because, you know, it's a style, it's a preference, so it's up to you. I prefer to have it be... You can only tell if it's there in solo, so in context you wouldn't be able to tell it's there, but it will help you blend the kick and the bass better. So that's it for this example. It's very nice to have in Arsenal. Let's look at the other example with the pads. Let's have a look at the second example now, which is mostly used in friends house or EDM music. Now this is the pumping effect you get with the pads or the chords. 
And this is a very simple example here with terrible sounds, but the principle will be the same. So let's listen to what we will be working with. So I have this uh, alchemy sound, it's a simple chord progression. Well, as you can see, it's very static. There's not much movement there. And just a simple four on the floor, four on the floor kick. So there's no movement there. Let's change that. Let's add the compressor to the track that we want to affect. And for this one, let's actually use this method instead of going through the bus. So again, sidechain, instrument, kick. It works both with MIDI and audio, so it doesn't matter. And this is one of the cases where it's up to you. It is personal preference. How much do you want the pumping sound? Do you want to be extreme? Do you want to be subtle? There's no right or wrong. It is exactly what you want. So let's turn auto gain off and then start working on it. So that's too little. Let's actually push it to the extreme. You can go even more. Or you can go, you know, a bit more subtle, which I prefer. That's it. Essentially, you do what you want, but you can create movement just using the compressor. And of course, we will have to address the kick, but that's another video. Thank you for watching. Until next time.